Uh, it's Tuesday, the 27th of August. Welcome, everyone, to your business morning. I am boasting normal for you. Let's get the show. So, for today, started in the next one hour. Nigeria's tax agency, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, says it's planning a 5% VAT charges for all local and foreign online transactions with effect from January the 20, 2020. Uh, the uh, proposal is, uh, however, subject, subject to federal government's uh, clearance if the government says uh, that will be uh, okay by then. That's according to the FIRS. But the uh, move is being already commended. The uh, chief economist for Africa, uh, Standard Chartered Raza Khan, says in a tweet earlier today that the move by the Nigeria's tax agency was, quote, important move in the right direction, end of quote. If you are preparing for the year 2020, you need to take note of some of this information because you'll be facing higher electricity tariffs between 8 Naira and 14 Naira for every kilowatt per hour effective July 2020. The Electricity Regulatory uh, Agency, the NERC, is reviewing the existing uh, MITRE, which is the uh, multi-year tariff um, order with some minor adjustment uh, to reflect costs and operating environment uh, which are faced by power distribution companies. They're facing serious liquidity and limited profitability in their businesses. So be prepared to pay higher electricity uh, tariffs between 8 Naira and 14 Naira per uh, kilowatt per hour next year, July. Then, of course, if you're doing online transactions, as I heard earlier, you'll likely be paying VAT of 5% uh, from January 2020. You need to get ready for the new year right now. Meantime, the finance uh, budget and national planning minister, uh, Zainab Ahmed, says Nigeria's debt is not too high, but the country faces revenue problem. So he says the country is looking to raise revenue from the, present, uh, from the current 55% uh, uh, in 2018 to 85% in the next uh, four years. Uh, check through with the uh, PMI for, for, for us. Uh, check the PMI. That's the Nigeria's uh, manufacturing data for the month of August. According to the Central Bank, the report shows a slight uptick to 57.9, reading against 57.6 in the month of July. Uh, supplier delivery time and raw materials inventories uh, moved at a faster pace according to the data, but production level, new orders, and un empl employment moved at a slower rate. Uh, the flip side of the PMI or the manufacturing PMI is the non-manufacturing PMI, which read 58.8, largely flat in the month of August over the July levels. Business activity and inventories rose faster, but new orders and employment level at a much slower rate. That's according to the financial regulator. So what did the financial regulator, the central bank, discuss yesterday with the media? Of course, a part of what was discussed behind closed doors at the Bankers Committee. Uh, and that had to do with the increased credit uh, into the SMEs and other sectors of the economy being pursued aggressively by the central bank. Uh, this is, uh, let's take a listen to part of the briefing yesterday by Aisha Hamad, who is the deputy governor in charge of financial systems uh, stability at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Let's take a listen to what she said the new guidelines are relating to credit expansion in the banking sector and why some new guidelines or rules are being put in place. Now, we're not unaware of some of the challenges or the reasons why credit has not been growing. Part of that was the appetite of banks to lend, um, especially where you have customers that um, either willfully um, refuse to repay their loans. And so, um, in this respect, we have come up with a new clause that we'll be including in the offer letters that will be granting going forward. And I think before I speak to the items in that clause, I think it's important to also remind us of the pronouncement we made to banks that by um, end of September, and that September 30th of this year, they should have grown the loan deposit ratio to 60% for those that were below. As at the time we made this pronouncement, the industry was at around 57%. In our view, if all the banks that um, are required to meet this requirement actually meet it, you will see growth of about a trillion added to the credit balances. And so as I was saying, um, we were also, in addition to that pronouncement, looking at 
what are the challenges and what um, what are the um, factors that are affecting um, banks' ability or willingness to lend. So this is going to be more or less a credit risk protection clause that will be in all offer letters going forward. We'll share a copy. We have a copy here for you so to make it easy for you to use. But basically, it will contain the BVN details of um, the customers and the TIN numbers of the customers and more or less um, it will be a commitment by the customer that in taking the loan or a covenant that in taking the loan you agree and promise to repay the loan and that you also agree that um, should you default on the loan that um, the, the total amount of assets or the total amount of deposits you have across the industry and um, the banking industry would be um, applied towards repaying the loan. Now, this is not um, uncommon because banks already have rights or something we call rights or sets off within a bank. You take money from a bank, you take a loan, the bank usually has a clause in the letter that allows the bank to be able to repay your loan from all the assets you have with the bank. So this is just extending it across the industry. We think that there are very honest Nigerians out there that are willing to take loans and are willing to repay their loans. However, the, the few that do not pay, um, that willfully do not pay, is actually um, affecting others to have access to this credit. So um, we're very, very um, optimistic that this is going to enable the banks to lend more with more confidence, enable more Nigerians to get access to loans, particularly those in the SME retail sectors. And we're also looking at revitalizing the mortgage sector, like I said. Um, in that respect, I thought it was important to also mention that in our meetings, we reminded ourselves of some of the initiatives that the bank, the Central Bank of Nigeria, has undergone to improve the um, value chain within the mortgage lending sector. Um, the mortgage refinance company was set up to help increase liquidity to the system because we all know about the liquidity sources or the sources of funding for banks where you have longer term loans um, being supported by shorter term um, deposits. So that has helped in that respect. We've also come up with a mortgage interest drawback fund. And what that is supposed to do is to solve the problem of the high cost of mortgages. As we're all aware that a lot of mortgages are done at the high double digits. This would help reward those that you know have capacity to repay their loans and is expected to almost, re I think, by half, reduce the cost of mortgages by half. And then the final one is the mortgage guarantee company, which is supposed to help de-risk the mortgage sector by, um, this company is supposed to help to get, um, should I say mortgages that are bad, more or less, right, to get some funding back um, for the bank. Of course, the mortgages that will qualify for this are those that meet the underwriting standards um, required. And also, this company is going to be a private sector-led company that ha the banks have a lot of interest in. So it was a very good meeting. I'm going to hand over to some of the other um, members of the panel here. It was a very good meeting that focused a lot on how we can use credit, particularly credit to the small, medium enterprises, credit to individuals. Um, retail credit to jumpstart the economy. Uh, Aisha Ahmad, uh, Deputy Governor in Charge of Financial System Stability at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Of course, the Bankers' Committee meeting focused primarily on the banking sector credit. Okay, let's uh, get a sense of yesterday's uh, uh, trading day. We lost uh, just about 0.4% uh, on the first trading day of the week. That's uh, deep in the market from a roaring 3% that we uh, put together last week. This looks like this is the final week of the month, unless it was happening to the markets across board. Temple Ashaju, uh, business correspondent, is live to us from our studios at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Temple, uh, good morning. This is not surprising as it were. Uh, one day we're one step forward, the next day we're one or two steps backward. Uh, so we just take this in our strides, or this is how investors are taking it. 
Sure, Bolson. I mean, investors are quickly taking profit on some of those uh, stocks that actually made gains uh, last week. Uh, if you look at the likes of uh, Forte Oil, it had some 10% gain on Friday. Uh, some smart investors quickly raked in that 10% uh, gain yesterday. That's what we're seeing. And that cut across a couple of other sectors. If you look at the week-to-date performance last week, uh, it was only the insurance sector that didn't have any gain. That was the only sector that actually recorded a uh, decline week-to-date. But yesterday, it it was the only sector that actually made some gains. Uh, tells you some investors that actually took in profit uh, the week, uh, last week. Uh, but yesterday, we saw a bit of buying on the likes of Sovereign Trust Insurance, Ico Insurance, and a couple of other names in that sector. But basically, uh, the losses that we've got month to date expanded again yesterday, given the uh, decline that we experienced yesterday. Yesterday, performance also expanded to 11.89% as we got some 52.42 uh, billion naira shaved off the equity capitalization of the exchange and basically the reason is that investors uh, sentiment was really weak yesterday uh, we got losses uh, mainly in the in the, in the oil and gas segment of the market because if you look at the sectoral analysis uh, that was down by more than 6%. But activity level was really down uh, 87% decline yesterday. Uh, we saw Transcore uh, PLC actually as uh, the most uh, actively traded stock in the markets yesterday. That's 1 million units of shares traded. Going by the sectoral uh, uh, performance yesterday, the banking sector was down. Investors took profits. Uh, no matter how little uh, some 2 cobalt, 10 cobalt was uh, in the market market was really, really important to a lot of investors. Consumer goods was uh, down, industrial goods segment was down, CCNN was down, and J Julius Berger was also on decline yesterday. For the energy stocks that we track, uh, if you look at Forte Oil, uh, you look at O and O, Seplats, they were basically down yesterday. Seplat down by 10%. Uh, Eternal Oil was only where we saw a bit of rejigging. Uh, some investors put money there, by, and then it rose by 1.82% uh, yesterday. If you look at the listed security side of the market. We got food concepts, we got UBN properties as the two key uh, securities that investors bet on yesterday. Uh, some 1.15 million units of shares traded on uh, food concepts yesterday. That's some company that's actually carrying out its uh, rights issue at the moment and that's impacting on the market. Uh, yesterday the market, the platform was up by some 0.35% uh, as equity capitalization uh, closed at uh, 511 uh, billion naira. Uh, but there was decline in the activity level yesterday by some 79%. For the fixed income side of the markets, uh, market was really bullish. The bonds and the treasury bills were really bullish yesterday. Uh, we got average yields on the bond side of things, right, uh, declining by 15 basis points to around 14.23% uh, from the 14.38% that we saw it's closing at on Friday. And that tells you there's a bit of a bullish sense here. And the 18th uh, March 2036 security, uh, which is a lot of the long end of the curve uh, explains uh, the kind of experience that we saw on the side of the market. This is for the uh, treasury bill side of the market, even though we know that investors appear to be more interested at the short end of the curve yesterday, Bosun. Uh, Temple, thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, get a bit of a sense of how the second trading day is coming off later on the show. Thank you so much. Temple Ashaju from our studio side the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Hold it a second, everyone. Let's get back to you. We're talking commodities. Agro products are getting crushed in the expanding tariff fight between the U.S. and China and a few other countries in between. What does it mean for agro commodities prices? Take a break, everyone. One minute. <laughs> 